Hey, this is Pastor Jeff Daniel of Kingdom Light Church. Get ready for a destiny molding, destiny shaping, destiny impacting, and destiny transforming word of God today. In Kingdom Light Church, you will always know the truth, the truth that will set you free. Now, let's get ready for the word that will bring light to your life. You're blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to the first Sunday in 2024. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just as you are here on the first Sunday, you will also be here on the last Sunday of the year. But not only that, you will also be here on the first Sunday of the year 2025. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And guess what? Between now and the last Sunday of the year, several versions of you will come alive several versions of you that you have never known before will come alive. There is something that is very crude inside of you. This year, by the instrumentality of the word of God, it will be refined. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That, that crude blessing that is hidden somewhere in you, the fire of the Holy Spirit, uh, the fire of the Holy Ghost is going to refine you until you have to wake up every day introducing yourself to yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm talking about strange orders of blessing, strange order of manifestation, strange order of progress. I'm talking about strange orders of understanding that when wisdom appears around you, when people see you, they will wonder if you went back to a school that is not on the planet Earth. Because wisdom will be oozing out of you. Grace will be oozing out of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. You see, there is another you that you yourself you are waiting for. Amen. There's another you that you yourself you are waiting for to appear. But not just that. There is another you that the people assigned to bless you in life, they are waiting for that version of you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You don't want the man or the woman assigned to be your destiny helper to come and not be able to recognize you. Because they are looking for a particular you. And that particular you has to manifest. The Bible says the whole creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. So that son of God that needs to manifest. You see, it took Jesus 18 years of God walking. You know, after age 12. We didn't hear anything about Jesus anymore. Because even though people were sick, people were dying, people were in bondage. In fact, there was a woman who was so committed to church. And yet she was banned for 18 years. I've told you before, Satan has no capacity for sympathy. Can you imagine that kind of condition? And I know somebody here that is something that has been haunting you for a long time now. You see, Satan will never wake up one day and feel sorry for you. No, he can't do that. It's not in his nature. It's not in his character to sympathize with you. We only have one high priest, Jesus Christ, who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He is the only one who can sympathize with your condition and not just sympathize, but bring solution to that problem. Glory be to God. Are you still here? And so the version of you that needs to manifest has to come out. If not, had Jesus not manifested, that woman would have been stuck for over 18 years. I'm sure you know about John chapter 7, that a man who was afflicted and bound for 38 years in one spot. In fact, the Bible did not tell us when the affliction started. It only told us how long he has been waiting for a change. But I want to announce to somebody today, this year is your year of change. 
this is your year of change in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And that very day, it was like a normal day. Just like today, it's like a normal day. That woman came to church like she will normally do. Normally do. All of a sudden, Jesus appeared. And the power of God was there. And everything she dealt with for 18 years, she walked out of that service as if it never happened before. I am believing God that today when you walk out today, every problem that followed you here will become a history in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It will look as though you never had a problem before. And when you begin to tell people what used to be, they will think you're lying because God would have torn your captivity. The Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Glory be to God. He says, and our mouth was filled with laughter. When God delivered Peter from prison, Peter was walking out of prison. He was going out of the fence and yet to him, it was still a dream. That level, that type of miracle will happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name. Before we sit down, can you go to Galatians chapter number 3 and verse 13. Are we there? Let's read together. Christ has what? redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Now, look at that. Christ became a curse. Not for himself. For us. Christ became a curse for us. So that you shouldn't be under any form of curse again. Amen? Amen? For it is written, curse is what? Everyone who hangs on a tree. Verse 14. The reason is that what? The blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That we might. So that when the blessing comes... This is what he's talking about. That we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. So the blessing is the promise of the spirit. But to get it is by faith. Are you here? The blessing was promised by the spirit. The vehicle that communicates it into your life is by faith. So the just, if the just must live, he can only live by faith. Amen? If you're going to live the life you've been dreaming about, it is only going to be by faith. Father, help us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God. First Corinthians chapter 2. Let's pay attention. It's the first Sunday. Uh, it's going to be precept upon precept. A little here, a little there. Are you still here? So, Whatever you're learning, I've told us this before, uh, whenever you went to school, the, your first class, the first class, what you were taught in school, the first day or the first semester, it was important as what you were taught on the last day of class. Amen? It's a combination of series of informations dispensed to you Different measures at different times that at the end of the day, you turn out and you celebrate that you're a lawyer. And you celebrated that you're a doctor. It was not just one class. So the prepared blessing is what we're trying to get us so that every week, something that has been prepared for you begins to appear in your life. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So First Corinthians chapter 2. And verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, ye have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man what? The things. Is it the thing or the things? 
The things means plenty. The things means what? Plenty. And then the Bible now says, I have not seen, ye have not heard. That means what you are seeing now or what you are experiencing now is not anywhere compared with what God wants you to see and to experience. So you can't die. Tell yourself, I can't die. I can't, I can't, I, I can't. No, there's too much in store for me. I can't give up now. There's too much that God has prepared for me. The excitement of what has been prepared is supposed to ginger you not to give up. You see, before you were born, in fact, your conception was a function of victory. Amen? Do you understand that? Your conception was a product or a function of victory. Before you knew anything about success or failure, you won. <laughs> Amen? You fought the battle against over two million sperm cells. And you won. So, in fact, fighting is your character. And winning is your nature. Fighting is your character and winning is your nature. The fact that you appeared means that you have been a winner all the time. So, if you fought at that level and won, when you didn't know much, come on now, you can't fail. Somebody say, I can't fail. I can never be a failure. Oh, hallelujah. Anything I engage in, I am going to win because I have been programmed, designed, prepared to win. Always in the name of Jesus. Be it sickness or disease. Whatever is a setback, just know you have been designed to win at all times. In fact, the circumstances came to prove that you are going to win all the time. If Goliath never appeared, David would have ended his experience with just killing the bear and the lion. But when Goliath showed up, it confirmed that David will always win. Somebody say, I will always win. Oh, That giant that is staring you in the face now is just trying to confirm that you will always win and you will win again. Hallelujah. Be in financial difficulties. Don't worry. Whatever is a doctor's report, just know God is just giving you another opportunity to see that what you did before you had any sense at all is still in you. Somebody say, I still got it. Oh, yeah, I still got the fight in me. Yes, I'm going to fight and I'm going to win. I don't just fight and beat the air. I fight to win. I fight intentionally. I fight on purpose and deliberately because I know the end result. My father is the referee and he will not blow the whistle until I win. Glory be to God. Are you still here? So the Bible says, I have not seen ear have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. We are going to run very fast today because I want you to see that the prepared blessing is only for a prepared people. The prepared blessing is only for a prepared individual. And God did a part of that preparation in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. The Bible says, for we are his workmanship or a masterpiece of God that was prepared before time for good works. You are a masterpiece. God sculpted you. God designed you on purpose for the challenges that you will meet in life and his goal and intentions are that you should win no matter how rough the situation may be. Glory be to God. Are you still here? He says we are his what? Workmanship. That is why when you go get a new phone, especially if it's um, a recognized 
and our validated company. I'm not talking about the one that is maybe the uh, the logo is different from the. Have you ever seen an, an <laughs> It's a HP laptop, but behind it is Apple. <laughs> no, God didn't make any mistake. Your content is exactly as the logo behind it. Amen. He put his seal on you, and the seal is the seal for victory. Amen. So God prepared you to do good works in life, and he prepared blessings for you. Some of you who uh, have children probably in the last maybe 25 years, well, maybe, yeah, in this current generation, I know you parents, you did a lot of preparation. Amen? Yeah, when you knew that you were pregnant, the next thing, you even carved up a weekend to go shopping for the baby, and you began to prepare the room of the baby. Once you knew the sex of the baby, you began to make arrangements preparing for the baby that is going to throw temper tantrum someday, but it didn't matter. <laughs> you were preparing for the room. Is that right? God is smarter than you. If we will prepare before the arrival of a child, God also prepared so much before you appeared. Amen? Glory be to God. Do you understand what I'm saying now? So you have to know that. And so since it has been prepared, my job today is to show you how to enjoy your prepared blessing. Amen? Listen. Have you ever been invited to a party for some reason, you slept off. For some reason, something happened. You were assigned to work that day, and you missed the party. While you were at work, you know, somebody flashed the pictures of the occasion on Instagram, on Facebook, and you could not believe yeah, the most delicious meal, the one you've been dreaming and eating in your dream, all of it was on display at the party. But you did not. It was prepared, but you did not. Amen? It was prepared, but you did not participate. God is in the business of preparing things. In fact, already prepared things for you. Your job as a believer is, number one, to learn what I'm showing you today and then ensure that I will not excuse myself away from what is prepared. In Luke chapter 14, a rich man prepared a banquet. And he asked his servants to go invite people to come. And the Bible says they went out and different groups of people gave the same excuses not to be at the party. One said, I just got a field. Or a plot of land. I need to go see it. I just bought a car. I want to test drive it. I just got married. I want to go for a honeymoon. And the Bible says, because the character of God is such that if he has prepared, somebody has to participate or partake of it. So he said, go back to the highway and the byways and compel men to come because I've already prepared and it cannot be wasted. Listen to me. The blessing has been prepared. It cannot be wasted. So if you excuse yourself, somebody else will take your portion. Can you scream right now and say, nobody will take my portion. Nobody will take my portion of the blessing. I don't want anyone's blessing. I just want my own portion that has been prepared for me. But just in case somebody excuses themselves, Lord, add it to me. Amen? Did you understand that? You see, there was a time in, uh, in Matthew chapter 25, the Bible said Jesus gave men talent. Do you know the story? When he gave the talent, he gave five I know. Then he gave three, then he gave one, right? What happened? The Bible says the one who received one, he did not use it. At the end of the story, this is what happened. The Bible says, take away from him 
and give it to the one who knew how to use it. There is a thing called in this kingdom a transfer of your blessing to another person. If you don't know how to use or utilize what God has put in you, it can be taken from you. But God forbid that God has prepared so much for me and I lose out. How do I enjoy the prepared blessing? That scripture reveals to us that what God prepared is for those who love him. So the first point you want to write down is the love of God. The love of God. Do you love God? Do you love God? It's very important. The prepared blessing is for what? For those who love him. I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. The prepared blessing is for those who love God. And just in case... You say you love God. We want to do some test, you know, to, 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 to find out. It's just like a, what they call a lead more test. Just to be sure that you love God. Amen. Are you still here? Uh, so it is important because the love of God is easy for people to fake it. Have you met people and they tell you, you know, I love God. God knows that I love him. You know, God knows I love the Lord. You know, God knows that I love him. God knows my heart. But the activities around you does not show that you love him. And because God is not a man and God is not physical, anybody can lie on him. But the only people who can be deceived is those who don't know the Bible and those who don't know what love is. You see, when you have ever fallen in love and you see somebody in love, you can tell. Is that not true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you are falling in love and you are in love and you know what love is and you're operating love, when you find couples who claim that they love each other, you will know that they're just faking it. But yeah, because there are symptoms of love. When love is in place, you can tell. You can feel it. You can sense it. You can know it. So in order for us to know whether we love God or not, we have to investigate in God's uh, uh, economy or in God's system, how does he vet love? In God's kingdom, love for God is not kissing him. <laughs> Amen? Loving God it's not kissing God. Loving God is not saying I love you. It's not just word of mouth. No. Let's see the definition of love as far as God is concerned. John chapter 14 and verse 15. John 14 and verse 15. Let's see what it says. If you love me, do what? God's love language is not giving him the love rise. It's not cooking for God that proves that you love him. No. It says that number one sign that you love me is that you will keep my commandments. If I find somebody who keeps my commandment, they have validated their love for me. The love of God is to keep his commandments. Give me verse 21 for sake of time. Let's see what the Bible says. He who has my commandment, and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be what? He who loves me will or has been loved. Now, let's read it. Because many of us, we, uh, that's why you need to be educated today. You see, there are two levels of the love of God. There is a generic love of God that was dispensed, it was that love that killed Jesus and brought salvation to man. That was a generic love. That love covers every unbeliever, anyone messing around, whoever is not a child of God right now. That love has been released, and any day somebody signed up into that love, they give their life to Jesus Christ. That is 
the first level of God's love. The next level of God's love is what we're seeing here. Can we read together so I'm not the one making it up? It says, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me, what will I do? I will, will be loved by my father. Will be loved. Will be loved. Not has been loved. Will be loved. He who obey my word. So this new level of love that God dispenses is for those who keep his word. Amen? And there are benefits, advantages that comes for those who enter into this new level of love. Look at this new level of love, what it produces. And I will love him. This is Jesus now. I manifest myself to him. I will show myself only to those people. I will reveal things only to those people. It is not everybody in church or everybody that is born again that enjoy the manifestation of Jesus Christ. And without the manifestation of Jesus Christ or the revealings that come from Jesus Christ, your life can never enter the realm of the prepared blessing. Why? It is for those who love him. The prepared blessing is for those who love God. Did you understand that? If you have this in your mind, then obeying him becomes paramount. Those who love him are, is a proof that they obey him is proof that they love him. Amen? Now, the question that will be, how many commandments are you violating? <laughs> Amen? And before you begin to count the Ten Commandments, there are 613 commandments in the Bible. 613 commandments in the Bible. In fact, there are more commandments in the New Testament than the Old Testament. <laughs> Amen? Amen? That's why we must run away from this foolishness that grace... In fact, grace came so we can keep commandments. Yeah, grace came so we can keep the commandments. God has not changed. No, he releases the grace so now we can keep the commandments. What commandments are you violating? He who lost me will keep my commandments. The proof, number two, that you love God is that you love people. Proof, number one, is you love God. Proof, number two, is you love people. Listen to me. If you claim that you love God, one of the easier way to prove that is to see how you relate with people. Amen? Yeah, one of the ways to know that this person really loves God is to see how he loves people. You cannot claim, according to scriptures, let's look at it, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20. We are talking about enjoying the prepared blessing. And we said, in order to enjoy it, you got to love God. And in order to prove that you love God, you have to obey him. Point number one. Number two, to prove that you love God, you love people. Look at what it says. If someone says... I love God and hates his brother. He's a liar. Point blank. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen and whom he will never see? In other words, God brings people around you to validate or to see whether you love him. Anytime you treat people, despising people, you have your report card with you already. You don't love God. Amen? Oh, you don't know what they did. And before I even, because most of the time, uh, when we talk about loving people, the real people that need to hear this message is actually not the ones who are doing their best to love is the ones who are doing their best to irritate love out of you. Have you met people like that? that you're, you're doing everything possible to love them. 
And I'm not giving you an excuse not to love. I'm just saying, if you are that kind of a person that your assignment in life is to irritate love out of me, please. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I'm trying to love. Please just help me out a little bit. Amen. Can, 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 yeah, when you go, don't, 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 don't say it right now because they might be in church. But so when you go home, just send a text message to someone say, can you help me to love you? Yeah, yeah, because I know you have people like that in your life, and you want to show that you love God, and yet they are doing everything possible to drain that love that you have. Every time they come up with all kinds of silly things, and every time you're asking God, Lord, help me to maintain my love for this person, but the next minute they come up with something. Now, listen to me. The Bible says anyone who is engaged in such a thing, they will incur the judgment of God. He says, offenses must come, but woe unto them by which those offenses come. Don't be an agent or an instrument of the devil to keep offending people. No. Especially when you're a child of God. Do your best to love people. Do your best to do what you got to do to ensure you too you are responsible for loving people. Don't keep telling people, oh, but you said you're a Christian. See how you're doing. You, don't you say you're a Christian? Did you understand that? Have you met people like that? They go, after they mess with you, they go tell people, and she call herself a child of God. So who do you call yourself? Child of Satan. Well, that's why we are not relating well, because <laughs> glory be to God. Did you understand that? But the love of God is proven by the love for people. God says, if I see how you're loving people, you are telling me that you love me. Because one of the judgment uh, 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 points uh, on the last day is there are people whom God will say, when I was naked, you gave me clothes. When I was in prison, you visited me. And they'll be asking, when did we see you and did that to you? He said, oh, no, when you did it to other people, it was me you were doing it to. Glory be to God. Do you understand that? So every opportunity to do good with people, you are proving that you love God. And if you love God, he says he will manifest himself to you. There are secrets to your success. There are secrets to your advancement. There are secrets to your deliverance and liberty. That secret will only be revealed to you when you love God. He says, I have not seen. That means including you, you have not seen what God has prepared for you. But if you want to see it, he says, you can only see it if you love me. Once it is confirmed that you love me, I will reveal what I have prepared for you. Glory be to God. Somebody say, I will love the Lord. Number three, proof that you love God or love people is generosity. Being generous. Amen? Being what? Generous. It's a proof of love. If you are struggling to give, it is not that you are stingy. It's that you are not in love. Let me say that again. If you struggle to give to God, struggle to give to people, it is not that you are stingy. It is that you don't know what love is. Any believer who struggles to give tithes or give offering, the problem is not that they don't have money. The problem is that they don't love God. If you love God, if you love people, one of the, if, have you noticed that you can give your last penny to your lover? And be happy about it. When you are in love, you give without thinking. In fact, you give away what you have and go borrow from a friend because you don't want your lover to suffer what they are going through. If you are struggling to give, your problem is not that you don't have money. Your problem is not that you are stingy. Your problem is that you have not fallen in love. You can't fall in love with God and still be holding back your tithe, holding back your offering. It's not possible. So I'm trying to help somebody today. If you really want to experience the things that have been prepared for you, 
Fall in love with God because there is more to you than what you're experiencing now. Don't let the devil kill you and limit you at the little level that God has helped you so far. Because I have not seen, he have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man. So if you prepared only for those who love him, I better love him. And the way to show that I love him is to obey his commandments. Number two, the way to prove that I love him is to love people. And guess what? Because you are hearing this message, God will send somebody to check if you will love him through that person. Amen? And it's going to be a person that... If you have your way, <laughs> what you will do to them is terrible. <laughs> but it will be a test of your love for God. Amen? Glory be to God. H have you found it so easy to forgive people that you love? Amen? Yeah, I was dealing with a situation recently, and the guy was bent on, no, I'm done, I'm done. And I asked the question, when you initiated this subject of marrying or loving, or getting married to this person, was there a love factor in it? He couldn't answer the question. So I, I knew it was nonsense. Love covers a multitude. The same offense or lesser offense that somebody did to you that you want to slice their neck. Your lover, he, shot, he didn't break your heart. You remove your heart. <laughs> and you are still running after them, not even wanting the heart back, but telling them sorry. <laughs> Love covers a multitude. I'm teaching you so you can validate people who say they love you. Don't be fooled. If somebody loves you and they can't forgive you, they don't love you. Simple. Love, the Bible says, covers a multitude, not just one sin, but a multitude. That means you can't even count it. In case you say, well, they offended me 59.9 times. Yes, you could count it, so it has not even reached multitude yet. But if there is love, so you need the love of God. Somebody say, God, put your love in me. That is why this love we are talking about is not human love. No, it's not human love. Uh, Romans chapter 5 verse 5, the Bible says the love of God has been shared abroad in our heart. And when that love is in place, it says our hope, make, give me uh, Romans chapter 5 verse 5. It says our hope make it not ashamed. Why? Because the love of God has been shared abroad in our heart. Now hope does not disappoint. Why will it not disappoint? This kind of hope does not disappoint. When a lover is hoping, he cannot be disappointed. You know why? Because love will make you overlook all the excuses and all the delays. That is why some people are dating somebody for 52 years and they keep telling them, you know, we're going to get married. And when I get this job, we're going to get married. When I do this, and you keep believing. And somebody like, I, excuse me, can you smell the coffee? No, marriage is not happening. But because love is involved, they keep hoping, they keep believing. Oh, no, I will change. I won't abuse you again. I can't do this again. I have changed. You keep believing. In fact, before they leave the parking lot, they've cursed you out again. But you keep believing. Why? Because love covers a multitude of sin. And when love is in place, hope can never disappoint. Love. The love of God has been what? Let's look at, put at that scripture. The love of God is what? So when I say love God, it can love God with your human love. You need the Holy Spirit to inject the love of God into your heart. So that you never see anything that God does wrong. Some of you, you are so offended at God. That's why you can't believe God. You see, when you're offended at somebody, you can't believe their words. Do you understand? But when you love somebody, oh, this year will be my year of the prepared blessing. I believe it because I love him. Amen? When you love, you can wait. When you love, the Bible says, he that believeth is not in the haste. When you love, you can wait. 
When you are in love, no matter how much time is passing, as long as your lover tells you, just wait for a little five more minutes, I'm coming. Have you not done that before? You've done it. Yeah. The appointment was supposed to be 1 p.m. They didn't show up till 9 p.m. And in fact, three minutes before they got to there, I said, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot something. Can you give me one more minute? Oh, yeah, that's fine. I'm cool. No, you are not cool. It's love that is driving you. The love of God. God has prepared things for the ones who love him. If you want the prepared blessing, the dignity designed for you, the peace designed for you, the progress and the success designed for you has been prepared. You don't have to work and create your own future. The Father has prepared a future for I know the plans that I have for you. They are plans of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. He has already done the job. Why can't you love him? Just reciprocate the love. Amen? You don't just keep receiving love and keep receiving love and not give back. One day, the person will snap. I say, look, I'm sick and tired of just me showing love. Did you understand that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So you need to reciprocate. That love that broke sin off of your back, that love that brought you into the kingdom, that love, he's saying, can you love me, please? Wow. Can you imagine the worthiest man Pleading for you to love them. Amen? If you struggle with giving, don't try to give. Try to love. When you love, giving will be easy. Amen? Glory be to God. Did you understand that? If somebody said they love you, one of the ways to check is how easily they forgive you, how easily they overlook your offenses, and then how they give to you and care about you, give them, giving you their time and all of that. That's the proof of love. Amen? Did you understand that? Okay. So, if you want to confirm that you love God, those are the things to check. Next thing, so the first point for those who will enjoy the prepared blessing, the first point is what? Love God. Is that right? The love of God is what will bring you to where you will see and know what has been prepared for you. In this day of our days of our prayer and fasting, those are the days that you're going to engage in prayer, going to your lover to show you the secrets of the things he has prepared for you. Do you understand that? You know, uh, when they sat at the communion table, and uh, Jesus said, one of you will betray me. So, uh, in order to get the answer, even Peter didn't know who it was. So, what they did was that. Peter leaned over and said, John, can you ask Jesus to tell us? They were all disciples, but they didn't know the answer. The one they knew should know the answer is the one who told us that this is the disciple that Jesus loved. <laughs> Have you read John? He said, this is the disciple that Jesus loved. And the Bible says he was the one that was always leaning on the chest of Jesus Christ. He was expressing how vulnerable he is to Jesus Christ. And the, the disciples knew if anyone will know a man's secret, is the one that loved him. Amen? Do you understand? That secret that you need to know, an idea that you need to... You know, the, uh, two days ago, up until yesterday, I kept meditating because I said something on Wednesday about this uh, blessing and how man has done their best to begin to experience that dominance by the blessings of God. And we mentioned that uh, if you check how man has succeeded in having dominion in the air. Check the shape of the airplane. Amen? Glory be to God. If you want to know how man has done well in dominating in the earth realm, check the bicycle. It has two legs. The chicken has two legs. Check the car. The dog has four legs, and the car has four legs. 
they, 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 they took wisdom from what God has already prepared and shaped it to bless. Oh my goodness, hallelujah. Ah, uh, hallelujah. Are you following carefully? That it was what God already prepared that they tapped into that wisdom and began to create things in the natural realm to give us dominance, to give us dominion, to give us victory. So somebody today should be able to pray because that's what I've been asking God. I said, Lord, give me access to the realm of that mystery. So I can connect with something that will give me power in the air, in the heavenlies, on the earth realm, and beneath the earth. If you check this train, train has more than one legs, right? It's like a millipede. They copy from what God created. Everything that creeps under on the earth, God say have dominion over it. So man tap into that wisdom and began to use it to facilitate and enhance life. The fish, look at the marine sheep. They all got the wisdom from what God has. Now, the question that will be, what have you gotten from that realm? You know, I was thinking about you in my thought, even though I've not gotten my own yet, but I want to put pressure on you, that this year, let your designs not come from Instagram or something you see somewhere. Whoever got their design on Instagram, on Facebook, that you have to see to design clothing. This year, that level is over. Amen? Amen? Do you understand that? You see, and this is why a believer should be angry when I can't manufacture anything. Do, do you understand that? When God said, let them have dominion, it was before the physical man was created. So every human being was given that blessing. That is why the guys who manufacture the airplane, the guys who are manufacturing air for, uh, a cell phone, manufacturing cars, they don't have to be born again. They don't have to be born again. It is God's dominion mandate on man that gives man access. And some of these sophisticated things that have been manufactured, listen to me, don't be fooled. They play allegiance to a spirit. Yeah, a spirit will have to educate you in order to have dominion. A spirit. There is a level of dominion that we want. A spirit has to educate you. Do you understand? Two days ago, I finished praying, lay down, and all of a sudden, a man appeared and began to talk to me about the spirit of Elijah. And I know, I know, I don't want to miss the opportunity because I know I have pushed to a point where they are trying to let me know, hey, you are coming closer, and if you come closer to receive wisdom from us, you, your life must has to be straight and strict. You must be allegiance to a spirit. You know, there's a spirit called wisdom. If you meet that spirit, everything that comes out of your mouth will be great. It's a spirit. Ben Carson. How many of you know Ben Carson? Have you watched his movie? Did you see where he testified how before he get to where he became, uh, did the brain surgery, that a spirit or a being will appear to him and show him, uh, uh, yeah, an equation and solve it for him in the dream. When he gets to class, the same thing will come up, but he already knew the answer. You can never have dominion until you're educated by the spirit responsible for that realm. Everything is, is, is monitored by spirit. Do you want to enjoy that blessing? Then love God. When you love him, he reveals secrets to you. He will show you secrets on how to have a stable marriage, a stable business, a stable relationship, to advance in life. He will teach you that once you love him, as long as you love him, you will be, those of you who are so, ah, well, I don't hear anything. I don't see anything. No. When he revealed his heart to Peter, Peter betrayed him. <laughs> That's why some of us cannot backslide. No. God has shown me too much of his secrets. If I backslide, he will kill me. 
when he showed Peter that this is Christ, the son of the living God, after Jesus died, Peter dragged other disciples and walked away. Did you notice in John 21 that when Jesus came back, his attention was not on the other disciples. His attention was only on Peter because it was Peter that knew his secret. Hallelujah. There are relationships that you break. It, it looks as if it didn't even happen. But there are relationships. As a pastor, I can tell how far the relationship went by the level of agony that is left behind. <laughs> because too much was exposed. That's why it hurt. If we only did high five, the Lord will give you understanding, and we break up. I just need a sanitizer and I'm done. Anyway, the Lord will help you. When God exposes more to you, you can't leave him again. And that is why he must prove that you love him to show you those secrets. There's a level of resources and money that you have been thinking and dreaming to get. God can never give you that because that money can take you off. So he will rather keep you at this level, you know, $50 an hour. You're still coming to church. You're still paying your tithe. Can you handle $50,000 a week and still give your tithe and still be committed to the things of God and still love people and not be arrogant and not be proud? Can you still handle it? The secret is with God. For the secret things belongs to God, but the things that are revealed belong to us. For God to show you, your love must be proven. Amen? The second thing that you must do to enjoy the prepared blessing is the anointing. You need the anointing in order to experience the prepared blessing. What does that mean? The anointing is necessary to foster unity in one's life and in one's family. Give me Psalm 133. Let me show you what I mean. The blessing of God that has been prepared is for those who understand the power of unity. And if unity must be established, an anointing is needed. Glory be to God. Are you here? Behold how good and how pleasant it is. For what? To dwell together in unity. Listen to me. Kingdom Light Church, we will go far, we will go higher, we will experience abundance of blessing if we know how to live in unity. Unity of purpose. Unity of focus. Loving one another. It's a how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. What? In unity. What is the consequence? Let's read further. We will see something. Give me verse 2. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Jeff, running down on the edge of his garment. Whatever I carry is supposed to flow through you. That is what establishes the unity. Whatever our instructions I give, as long as you submit to that instructions, we're establishing unity in the house. It flows from the head down to the skirts of his garment. Do, do you understand that? We're establishing unity. It says when that kind of unity is in place, look at the next thing the Bible says. For there, the Lord will do what? The Lord will do what? There is a realm of unity in your house that you don't need to pray for the blessing. God will command it. Oh, there's a level of unity that will be established in an organization that you don't need to struggle for clients. God will command the blessing. It's called the commanded blessing. And when God commands the blessing, nothing can resist it. Now, that tells you that the blessing is a spiritual entity. It's a spirit being. 
the blessing is what hears the command of God. So just like a pastor can command the blessing, I bless you, the same way God can say, I bless you, he will command the blessing in your life. And we knew or we saw in Proverbs 10, 22, that the blessing of the Lord, it make it one rich. Your days of struggling and toiling are over in the name of Jesus Christ. Those days of wondering, how can I get past these limited resources? How can I get past this lack? You know, once you listen and adhere to what I'm telling you, you will be shocked at how much God can elevate you. It doesn't take time for God to bless a man. It only takes an encounter that comes through obedience. And you'll be surprised at what you've been struggling to get for years. In one week, God can turn things around for you. Somebody say amen to that. Just love him. Keep his word. He says, there God does what? He commanded the blessing. And I try to verify if God has ever commanded such a blessing somewhere. And I realize he started commanding it in 1 Kings chapter 17. Give me verse 4. 1 Kings chapter 17. Let's see how the commanded blessing worked. 1 Kings 17. First Kings chapter 17 is in the New Testament. I'm trying to help them since they are struggling to find it. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook. There was famine in the land. Elijah had prayed and no rain for three and a half years. So no food, no water, people were dying. And God singled this man and said, go to the brook. When you go there, the brook has water. You'll be drinking water. But how many of you know uh, you can't just be drinking water for 50 days? You need some chicken, you know, you know, like KFC. Yeah, something like that. Do you understand that? <laughs> so he went, but how is he going to eat? There is water, but how can he survive? And look at what the Bible says. I will, and it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded what? To feed you. I have commanded the ravens. Wow. The ravens? The ravens is not just a stingy bird, but the ravens, her appetite for meat surpasses all of y'all. The raven is so greedy for meat or so much in tune to eating meat that if there's no meat anywhere, the raven can hatch her eggs just to eat up the meat. That's how much the raven loves meat. I know you love meat, but please, there's someone that scares you. God says, I have commanded the raven to feed you, which means... It doesn't matter how stingy or how fist-tight somebody is. The one that God wants to bless you. Once there is unity established, God will force them to bless you. Somebody say amen to that. I said God will force people to give you stuff. God will force people to have discomfort so that you can have comfort because of the commanded blessing. That they will favor you at work. They will favor you in your business. The contract that was meant for somebody because God once has commanded the blessing over you, they will give it to you cheaply. Amen. Glory be to God. Somebody needed a ride to go for a job interview. And... Uh, their friend took them for the job interview. When they got there, their friend was waiting at the lobby so that she can take her friend back, you know, after the job interview. While she was there, uh, one of the managers in the company was needing to go take something in his car. And he saw this lady sitting at the lobby. He said, hey, what are you doing? I'm fine. I just brought somebody for a job interview. So, oh, okay. He went got whatever he needed, came back. As he walked in, his, the lady was still there. So he said, hey, so why didn't you apply for the job? He said, no, when I heard about it, it was too late. 
Uh, so, so do you have a job now? I said, no, I don't have a job. Oh, I'll interview you. Follow me. Went inside, got interviewed. After the interview, went back into the car. On their way, a phone call came. The one who took... <laughs> Somebody said, commanded blessing. It was that one that got the job. The one who came for the job interview properly didn't get it. When God commands the blessing, he will orchestrate events around to give you favor you don't deserve. Oh, glory be to God. Somebody, that's, that's my portion. The commanded blessing. He says, it is where brethren dwell together in unity that he will command the blessing. So don't spoil my blessing this year. Don't stop my blessing this year by constantly creating confusion in our midst. In your marriage, in your family, be careful with people who like to stay up strife. Why? They are trying to block the commanded blessing. It is okay to say, well, I'm fine. I know I am right, you are wrong, but since you are insisting for peace to reign, and I'm listening to this sermon today, I want the commanded blessing. There is no need for us to live in malice. Because I want the commanded blessing. Ravens fed this man and keep feeding him. In fact, until the brook dried up, they kept bringing meat and bread for him. Where were they getting it from? Well, if I was Elijah, I don't think I care. The most important thing for me is that, one, there was Uber delivery <laughs> at the right time, and it is what I wanted. He kept feeding on it. Guess what? The brook dried up, God says, since we have not allowed rain to fall yet, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you that there are still ways I can command the blessing. So he says, go to Zarephath. I have commanded the widow. So when you think that the widow was just generous, you notice how she began to say no from the beginning. That was someone who already wrote her will and her son that they were going to eat this last meal and die. This year, by reason of the commanded blessing, glory be to God, people will give up their comfort for you to have comfort in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say, men will give up their comfort. You see, this woman was ready to die, but because there was a force, something was pushing her. Do you know? Sit down. Listen to me. There's a huge difference between the love of a mother to a child and the love of a father to a child. Amen? Mr. John, the way you're answering looks like you really, really have been waiting to get on me on that. <laughs> but that's the difference, a huge difference. Amen? So when you read your Bible, you need to think deeper to see the magnitude of what had happened. It is okay for ravens because these are birds, right? You know, so it's okay. They don't have a wheel. But a woman has a wheel. She said, this is the last meal. And I'm about to go prepare it. And me and my son, so we'll eat and die. Yet, Elijah said, go prepare for me first. Why? Because God had commanded her. Glory be to God. The one that has been commanded to bless you. The one that has been. That's why you must be careful with men. You must treat people with dignity and honor. Do you understand that? Please and please. Whatever. Even God, when he wanted to help himself, he had to look for a man. You will get it. I said, even God, when he wanted to help himself, he had to look for a man. When he couldn't find a man, he became a man. Don't play with men. Don't play with people. Your blessing in life will come through people. And the one that you never ever expected that will be the one to bless you, they will be the one. Look at the story I just told you. What if that lady was bragging well, 
I have a car. She has a car, but she didn't have a job. If she was saying, well, look, I don't have gas. I'm not taking you anywhere, blah, 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 blah. You, I mean, I didn't even know about the job interview. How come you didn't even tell me there was a job interview? It's today you're asking me. I hope you know those are scenarios that could have happened. Uh, now you, are, now is, you want me to take you there? I don't have time for that. If she had done that, she would have missed out. You never know how the blessing will come. You never know. It could be just giving somebody direction at the gas station. It could just be saying hello to somebody. And that is how God will introduce the prepared blessing into your life. Glory be to God. Do you understand? I had a daughter one time. She is so GQ. She only shops at Mercy's dealers. And then one day something stares up in her to go to Ross to do shopping. And guess what? We've been praying and believing God for a husband. That day she went to Ross. She was doing her shopping and a young man saw her. Right there, he said, I want to marry you. There's no any, how are you doing? Can I? No, 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 no. You are my wife, I want to marry you. And the lady responded, you want paper, right? You are in Nigeria, you want paper? I said, no, I have paper, I just want to marry you. They are married now. God can move you to go somewhere. God can move you to be somewhere just because there is a prepared blessing for you. Amen? So every day, wake up expecting it. Amen? Yeah, wake up expecting it. Don't wake up with your nightgown and be going to Walmart where it's just neighborhood Walmart. We know, we already know it's, 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 it's not your hair, but hey, just the way you cover it to come to church, can you just do us a favor so that when we see you, we're not going to miss the prepared blessing. <laughs> the goal is that you don't want to miss. <laughs> Why are you guys laughing so hard? <laughs> Amen. Glory be to God. Don't ever be caught unprepared. Amen? Don't ever be caught unprepared. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I, um, I go to the store every now and then, and I see people. Okay, see? Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, we met one time. Amen? But let's leave it like that. <laughs> You know, so, and sometimes I meet people, because most of the time, church members or those who see on YouTube, they see me with my suit like this. So, and then I go to, I think that was how, <laughs> was that, did I go with my nightgown? No, right? <laughs> That's how we met this church member here. She's been watching me on YouTube for a long time. One day, I showed up in Sideways. And I just said, Pastor Jeff, how are you? I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, here we go again. In fact, just yesterday, I went to, is it JTC or where? Is it JTC? Yeah, I went there, and as I was going in, a lady said, oh, Pastor, God bless you. I look, I say, okay, that's good. <laughs> I, look, I look like a pastor right now. <laughs> Amen. So after a while of meeting people in the store, I decided that if I'm leaving the house, I should be ready that, you know, there are some times that you can lose a church member because your church member doesn't have confidence to introduce you to their friend that this is my pastor. <laughs> the Lord will help you. Yes, amen. Because you don't want to be like, uh, this, who is that? Where is somebody I know? Because they're like, no, this is... Yeah, they were waiting to go home. They send a YouTube message. Oh, that was a guy. But at that time, they are forgotten, you know, the flip-flop you were wearing. <laughs> Don't be caught off guard. You never know. This woman went and was preparing her last meal. And then all of a sudden, Elijah appeared. 
and say, give me first. But because it was a commanded blessing, she couldn't resist it. When unity is established, listen to me, nobody can resist blessing you. God will make you bigger than what you think you are in their face. God will make them see something in you that they love so much. They have been seeing you but never saw your dimple. He didn't believe me. I said they have been seeing you but the day God will command that blessing, what they will love about you will shock you that is your gap teeth that you have been trying to seal. It is the commanded blessing. And nobody will be as pretty. Their mother, their father can say whatever they want to say. No, this is it. Because they have been commanded and they can't resist it. What you need is unity. Unity within yourself. And in order to establish unity within yourself, is you must understand the place of the anointing. Amen? I've shared this before. In your engine, there are plastics... There are metals in your car engine. Is that right? There are plastics. There are metals in your engine. But the engine is running. It's running. It's running and the metals and the components in the engine, they rub on each other. Is that right? And yet heat is not generated. Metal and rubbers and plastic rubbing each other enough to crush the plastics. Is that right? Yet, nothing happens. Why? Because of oil. The engine oil. That's what it is more important to have that. When you go for oil check, have you ever gone to the gas station and they say, come back, or so-so there to put gas again? <laughs> because that is your own problem. If you don't know the orange sign to fill up your tank, you will be stuck on the highway. But they advise you on when to return your vehicle for oil change. Because when you lose or you, when your gas finishes, your car is not condemned. But when your oil finishes, that car is dead. When you don't have the anointing, you cannot enjoy the commanded blessing. In this church, we need the anointing. We need the anointing. When we have the anointing, there are some people who are metals. Their mouth is sharp. I know who you are thinking about. <laughs> yeah, because somebody is thinking about somebody. Is that right? But you see, even though they can be sharp, you are plastic, low-key person. We can still relate if there is oil. So to say, oh, no, 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 no. You know, I wanted to do this, but this sister or that brother did this. Do you have oil? Because if you have oil, you can lubricate the situation, lubricate the, the relationship, and there will be no friction at all. That's why we need the anointing. When you know the commanded blessing can only come when there is unity, then you will do what you need to do to have the oil on you, to have the anointing flowing on you, so that when you meet people, it is the oil that fosters the relationship. So no matter how sharp their mouth is, if they cut you, it's going to be the oil. Amen? So David will anoint the head of the sheep, just like he saw in Israel, so that even when a snake strike, it can only strike the oil. He anointed my head with oil. That's why the shepherds will put oil on the head of the sheep, so that if snake bites, it will only strike the oil. It doesn't matter who has beaten you or who has said crazy things about you. Once the anointing is on you, it will just slide down. Glory be to God. Are you still here? I want the commanded blessing. This year, I must live and enjoy the blessings of God. And every one of us will be a participant of that blessing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ.